So you're ready to file for retirement benefits. And let's, uh, let's make that as painless as possible. So this is Ed Weir, retired district manager of the Social Security Administration. I ran the third busiest office in the country, and I've taken uh, probably about 100,000 retirement claims, survivor claims, disability claims, uh, lump sum death payments. Uh, so uh, I've, I've done it a couple of times. So let's, uh, let's go through the whole process to make your uh, life easier and uh, get, it, uh, get it done, I guess. All right. So, um, so if you're, let's say you're 62 years old um, and you want to file for benefits starting 62 years old, you understand, you know, the calculations, your benefits are going to be reduced by about 30% from your full retirement age. Um, so this is a, obviously a decision that you'll have to make. Uh, you know, again, reach out to us and uh, we can walk you, uh, you know, kind of uh, play around with the options uh, with you. So 62 years old, um, you're going to be fully reduced for the retirement benefits. You will also be limited to the amount of work you can do. Um, this year, it's around 21,000 or so. This is uh, not sure when you're watching this, but uh, um, it just check out uh, social security go to ssa.gov and find out what the annual earnings limit for that particular year is um one of the questions i get quite often is okay i am going to retire in june i'm going to be 62 in june and i want to retire then but let's say you made forty thousand dollars that year before so from january until May, you made forty thousand dollars. Say, well, I guess I can't retire this year because I'm over. No, once you retire, then it changes essentially to a monthly amount. So you just basically say if it's you know, if the annual earnings limit is twenty four thousand, you just divide it by twelve. So as long as you stay under two thousand dollars per month from the month you start receiving Social Security benefits, you're good. So you can make a million dollars a month, or excuse me, a, yeah, a million dollars a month up until if you make a million dollars a month, please call me. Anyway, um, <laughs> if, uh, if you make a million dollars a month and then you retire in, you know, you want your benefits to start in July, no problem. Just don't make a million dollars a month start in July. And then what will happen is uh, the Social Security system is not the greatest. The computer is not the greatest. Sometimes it'll kick out a letter that says, hey, you know, you worked too much and you earned too much this year so you have an overpayment so you have to pay us back all this money all you have to do is prove to social security that all that money that i got was before i started receiving social security benefits and they'll say oh, okay i know do the whole calculation and you know you're done so don't worry about that no problem all right so um the actual process this is some of the the insider tips tricks and secrets you don't get from all those other youtube videos out there there's channels please be careful there's a lot of people out there that say yeah they're social security experts after taking a couple of days of uh, classes online about all things social security social security is uh, the regulations and everything over over twenty thousand pages there's exceptions to the exceptions to the exception so please be careful getting information from people that really shouldn't be giving that information. Again, this is, you know, your retirement, you've been waiting decades for it. Let's make sure you do it right. Okay. So, um, first you call up social security, say, okay, 62 years old, you can file three months before. So three months before, whenever you want to start your benefits, you call up social security, 800-772-1213 and say, Hey, I want to file for social security benefits. Okay. They'll schedule an appointment. You can do it. Uh, you can go into the local office. Um, you can, uh, they can call you at a particular time, or you can go online and file online, which is usually the best. Um, just go into Social Security now, um, set up a Social Security account, uh, myssa.gov account, um, and that way you can, you know, find out how much your benefit amount is. And number one is check your earnings before you go in um, your work earnings throughout your life if something looks strange during your appointment tell that person because one of the things that the social security would call the claim specialist you'll be talking to a, what's called a title two claim specialist this is kind of insider information title two cs 
there's different titles of the Social Security Act. So I was a Title II claim specialist. That's what I started as. And then I became a supervisor and the assistant district manager and then district manager. But I started off as Title II, so I did retirement, survivor benefits, uh, uh, SSDI, Social Security Disability Insurance and stuff. The other part is Title 16, which is the SSI, uh, Supplemental Security on some kind of welfare program. All right, I digress. So, um, so before you go in, print off your earnings record all your life. Make sure that it's all correct. If it's not, tell the person during your interview, hey, I worked in 1982. I know I worked. I know I paid into Social Security, but there's zeros here. What happens is it, somewhere along the way, somebody transposed the numbers and the your, your money is out there in suspense, as we call it. So there's a suspense file um, with a whole bunch of money in there that is waiting for people to claim it, you know. So all you have to do is say, okay, I worked at Acme Manufacturing in 1982 and, uh, you know, I made about this much money and they will go in there into the suspense file and look at Acme Manufacturing and get the, you know, the, the EIN of the company. And they will say, oh, there's, you know, $40,000 just sitting down there. Nobody has claimed it. And they kind of look at it and says, ah, the social security number should be two, one instead of one, two. So they will put that back on your record and that will increase your benefit amount. So do that before you go into um, your interview. Um, again, that's if you set up a social security uh, online account. If you don't, then when you go into the office or you do a phone interview, tell the person you want to check your earnings record, tell them to send it to you, give it to you. That's one of the things that unfortunately is missed quite often. So we want to make sure your earnings is correct. It's correctly posted because that's going to determine your benefit amount for the rest of your life. So it's kind of important, right? Okay. All right. Um, so you've, you've scheduled an appointment. Um, make sure you go in there with an ID. They have to ID you. You don't necessarily need a, most people don't need a birth certificate anymore to prove their age. Um, a few years ago, Social Security uh, made it easier to prove age, prove people's age. Um, if your Social Security's date of birth is correct and you say, what? My Social Security card doesn't have my date of birth. It does. You just, it's not printed on the card. In the internal system, we call it the pneumatant, I'm giving out too much person, uh, giving out too much insider information. All right. So in the, on the pneumatant, <laughs> on the pneumatant, um, it has your name and that's uh, if you've been married or something like that change your name you got your maiden name if you got married and you didn't change your social security card to that name then you're going to have an issue when you file so make sure your current social security card has the correct name that you're going to be using okay so the internal file says your name and it says uh, the social security number obviously and it says the date of birth and it also has your parents name so sometimes when you call into Social Security, they add the, they ID you by asking you, you know, what's your, you know, your father's, you know, last name or first name or something like that. And that's how they know. They look at the the numadent. So those have to be correct and stuff. So if everything's correct there, and you're a U.S. citizen, um, then you don't have to provide uh, your birth certificate. Okay. If you weren't born in the United States, uh, or if you're not a U.S. citizen, if you didn't want, to, if you became naturalized. Um, and you, after you become naturalized, make sure you go into Social Security Administration and update your record because it also has on there whether you're a uh, you know a legal resident, you've got you know green card as they say, and uh, not green anymore, but anyway, and whether U.S. A U.S. citizen. So if you become naturalized, make sure you get your record updated. And we actually, um, in my local office, we used to go down to the naturalization. Uh, ceremonies and put a little table there. And then when people bring their certificate of naturalization, we did the, the, the updates right there, but because of staffing issues, we stopped doing that. So make sure you go into the office. All right. So, uh, so you don't need a birth certificate. Everything is correct. Uh, make sure again, your name is correct. If you got married or divorced, whatever the case may be, call three months before, and then they will sit you down or, you know, go through the application, 
and ask you, um, you know, how much you're going to work this year. If, you know, 62, if it's after your full retirement age, does it matter? Work doesn't matter anymore, but they're going to ask you how many times you were married. Any of those marriages last for over 10 years. Why? Because someone else might be entitled to benefits on your record, either now or in the future. So 10 years from now, if, you know, something happens to you and someone has to go in there and file on your particular record or vice versa, then you have confirmed that, yes, you were married to that person for 10 years and that might help that person get benefits. So, all right. Um, once you provide all that information, the, the interview, if it's just a straight retirement, uh, you know, again, I've done hundreds of thousands of them, straight, easy retirement. There's no scrambled earnings, as we call them, where your earnings are all messed up and there's no windfall elimination provision. For those of the you can watch my video on that. That's for people that worked in non-covered in uh, non-covered earnings state and local governments and stuff. Um, if everything is nice and clean, you should be in and out. You know, your interview should be done in about 20 or 30 minutes. Pretty easy. Um, if you go ahead and file, let's say at 62 years old, and you decide uh, uh, someone offers you a job making the million dollars a month, and you say, oh, I can't, I'm receiving Social Security, I can't work. You can't work. All you have to do is call Social Security and say, hey, I'm going to go back to work. I'm going to make way over the amount. So again, if you, well, it's not again, but if you go over the amount, Social Security will hold back $1 for every $2 you go over. So if you make $20,000 over the limit, Social Security will hold back the first $10,000 of benefits. So if you get $1,000 a month, they'll hold back the first 10 months and then give you the last two months. Um, if you decide to go back to work, all you got to do is call Social Security and say, stop my checks. I'm going to go back to work. Right. And then once you reach your full retirement age, that will be recalculated. So for instance, if you get your benefits four years early, so your benefit amount is reduced by four years, right? 48 months. And then after a year, you go back to work, you know, do like I do. <laughs> you retire for about three days and it's like, wow, well, the retire is not for me. Let me go back to work and you know, find something to do. Um, so please call me and keep me out of trouble. Um, so you go back to work. So you've only taken a year of benefits and you went back to three years. So, but your benefit amount is reduced by four years. What happens is once you reach your full retirement age, social security automatically, the computer system looks at how many months you actually collected. So if your benefit amount was reduced 30% because you were, you know, filed at 62, but you, you know, went back to work after a year, then it will only be reduced by one year. So your benefit amount will increase as if you just retired a year before your full retirement age. Okay. All right. So if, uh, if it's kind of all confusing and stuff. So, uh, you know, again, give me a call and uh, we can go through it with, on your particular case and uh, make sure you're doing the right thing. Um, so, but long story short, it, you're not, you know, not set in stone. If you start collecting benefits and you want to go back to work, Social Security understands, give them a call and they can, you know, stop your benefits until you tell them, turn it on later. So, it's, OK, I have retired again. Again, once you reach full retirement age, then benefits will, you know, doesn't work, doesn't matter anymore. Um, after full retirement age, you can, can work a million bucks a month. Doesn't matter. So that's not an issue. Um, once you get close to if, if you file early and once you get close to 65 about three months before your 65th birthday medicare will send you a packet automatically with your medicare part a and your part b card and at that time if you're working and you have health insurance through work and your employer has 20 employees or more and you're happy with it and they don't make you sign up for medicare um, then you can just return the card. There's instructions on there on how to return the card. You can keep A because A is free. That covers your hospitals, um, you know, if, if you want. 
Um, there's a couple of exceptions to exceptions there, so uh, we can walk you through that. Um, there's always exceptions to exceptions. Anyway, um, but the B, um, there's a premium. So this year, 2023, it's $164.90. Um, so if you're working and you have health insurance through work, then you can refuse B. You won't be penalized if you have health insurance through work. And then a year later, two years later, three years later, you can start your B, right? You have what's called a special election period. And at that time, all you have to do is uh, provide a couple of forms, a 40B and a 564. It's embarrassing. I still remember the names of these forms, but anyway, I have no life. Um, so you just provide those forms and it's just proof to Social Security that you did have qualified coverage for the last three years and therefore don't penalize them because if you don't sign up for part B at 65 within a few months of 65, then you are penalized for the rest of your life. 10% for every 12 months, you did not sign up for part B, but if you had health insurance, you don't have to pay that penalty. Okay. You just have to prove, you know, you just take those forms down to your HR and they fill it out and they say, yeah, he, you know, he or she did have health insurance starting from 65. So don't penalize them. No problem. I've done hundreds of thousands of those. Those are very, very easy. When is your benefits going to start your benefits? Uh, if you start in January, um, so, so if you go in there like in December, it's very, very quick. Um, if you can go in there like January 1st and they can start your benefits and they just, you know, push the button and adjudicate the claim. And then your first check will come in February. So your uh, social security always pays, you know, the previous month, the next month. So January check comes in February, February check comes in March. And why do they do that? Well, eventually, guess what? We're all going to, you know, shuffle off our mortal coil and, you know, go to the great beyond. And uh, so Social Security wants to catch that check at the very end. So you have to be alive during the entire month. So if you, you know, pass away on the last day of the month, you weren't alive the entire month. You have to last until the next month in order to get that check. Um, so that's why they pay kind of a month late is to catch it at the end. Everybody has an end. And so Social Security, that's how they design that system. Um, yeah, it's getting into dark stuff now. So anyway, there's, I, I think I covered everything on the, the entire process. It's relatively easy. Again, number one, try to do it online if you can. Um, next, uh, phone appointment again, um, or, and, uh, last thing would be to, uh, um, yeah, uh, go into an actual office, but make sure you check your earnings, um, and make sure the social security employee treats you right. If you know, they, uh, they don't, uh, make sure you tell somebody, uh, we want, uh, you know, social security. Um, I know all the employees and they want to provide the best customer service and, uh, they're just as ashamed as everybody else when one of their compatriots, uh, you know, doesn't do the right thing and uh, doesn't treat people well. So uh, there's that. All right. Um, let us know if you need any, uh, any other help. Again, we help people with uh, Social Security. Please subscribe, like, and all that kind of good stuff you do on the YouTube thing. I'm going to keep uh, uploading videos on a regular basis, um, trying to establish an entire library. So any questions you have about Medicare survivor benefits, retirement, we're also uh, we're also doing the uh, the Affordable Care Act. Any of that information, and this is hopefully one day, uh, slowly but surely, it's going to become a one stop shop, one stop source, authoritative source for all things Social Security, uh, Medicare, um, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, eventually, want to add uh, veterans benefits in there. Um, and again, uh, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that uh, say they're experts, but uh, um, yeah, uh, questionable. And they certainly don't know the inside information. Uh, you got to work on the inside for decades and in, in order to get that type of information. So hopefully I uh, uh, helped you out today. Um, and congratulations on your retirement. It's a beautiful thing. I did it for about a week. <laughs> All right. Take care. Have a beautiful day. And before you go, uh, I'm going to put a, a video up here. Uh, it's probably one of my most popular ones that uh, goes down all of the 10 places. Uh, Social Security uh, usually makes mistakes. Yes, they make mistakes. Uh, everybody makes mistakes. 
on uh, uh, your calculations for how much you receive in terms of retirement disability. So please check it out and uh, uh, go through without go down through it systematically and uh, make sure Social Security uh, calculated your benefits correctly.